You are looking at new video just into our newsroom. This is 21-year-old Dylan Roof out of a police car heading to an airplane, boarding that plane, headed back to the low country. This after the suspect in last night's shooting was arrested in Shelby, North Carolina, around 11 o'clock this morning, some three hours and 45 minutes away from Charleston. Roof is expected to arrive in Charleston within the half hour. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dean Stevens. And I'm Victoria Hanson. We're also told that he's expected to be brought back and face at least one charge of murder. Of course, we're continuing to follow all of the developments from last night's church shooting, talking about a de devastating situation for the entire community. Let's check in right now with ABC News 4's uh, Bill Burr. Uh, he has been in front of the church on Calhoun Street for most of the day. And Bill, talk about what kind of changes you've seen as the day has gone on. Well, Dean, we've been here for the last uh, few hours or so, and we just see a steady flow of cars and trucks, uh, people stopping by and just uh, kind of rubbernecking, if you will, looking to see at the memorial, look at the church and see where this horrific crime took place. A lot of these people are from the community. They're from the Charleston area. Others are from are just tourists They're hearing the news on the radio and on TV, stopping by to see what happened. And we're also seeing a lot of people who are living in some of these uh, side streets, some of the neighboring uh, communities that are dropping off cars cards and notes and flowers and balloons here as a makeshift memorial at Emanuel AME. Earlier today, city and state leaders were anxious to share the news about the big break in this case, but they were also emotional as a brutal crime took its toll on the leaders looking to comfort a grieving community. Late this morning, they gathered at the Maritime Center to announce an arrest had been made. Charleston Police Chief Greg Mullen explained how 21-year-old Dylan Roof was caught by authorities in Shelby, North Carolina. He and others choked up as they talked about the crime and its consequences. And I cannot say how thankful I am and how appreciative I am of all the people who came together during a very tragic situation, a horrific situation, and one that has touched the heart and soul of every person who lives in this community. We woke up today And the heart and soul of South Carolina was broken. Back live here on Calhoun Street as we see more people that are walking up here to Emanuel AME Church trying to get a look at uh, at this memorial and to pay their respects to the nine people that died. We uh, ran into Congressman Jim Clyburn a couple of hours ago. We we're hoping to catch up with him for a quick interview, but we understand he could be meeting with some church leaders at this point. That's the latest from here on Calhoun Street. Dean Victoria, back to you. Bill, thank you. Police say uh, t the 21-year-old sat through Bible study with his victims for nearly an hour before pulling out a gun. Coroner Ray Wooten says his victims thought he was there to worship with them. Roof is accused of opening fire on his victims, killing nine. ABC News 4's Lara Rollo telling us now a little bit more about the victims. City leaders are calling the Holy City shooting one of the most heinous crimes Charleston has ever seen. Today, Coroner Ray Wooten released the names of the victims with a heavy heart. Immediately, my heart started to sink um, because I knew that this was going to mean a, a forever impact on many, many people. 41-year-old Reverend Clemente Pinckney served as a South Carolina senator for 15 years. He was the pastor at the Emanuel AME Church and was leading Bible study the night of the shooting. Senator Pinckney was a friend to this community, a friend of mine, and will be <clears throat> deeply missed. 45-year-old Sharonda Coleman Singleton was a pastor at Mother Emanuel, but also a beloved track and field coach at Goose Creek High. 54-year-old Cynthia Hurd was also well-known in Charleston. She served as a branch manager for St. Andrew's Regional Library for 31 years. County Councilman Elliot Summy says the library will now be renamed in her honor. It's the very least we can do uh, for someone who was a true public servant. 49-year-old Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor, the former director of community development for Charleston County, was known to have a good heart. Summy says she dedicated her life to helping those less fortunate. So in a very big way, um, she was uh, doing very human kindly things as her role in government. 74-year-old Reverend Daniel Simmons got out of the church barely alive. He later died in the operating room. 
Also killed were 26-year-old Tawanza Sanders, a graduate of Allen University, 70-year-old Ethel Lance, and 59-year-old Myra Thompson, and the oldest victim, 87-year-old Susie Jackson. We are sorrowful and we hurt today. Coroner Wooten says her work has only begun and asks the community for patience. And as we look forward, we're going to continue to serve these families. It doesn't end for us today. We will go on and on with them for weeks and months and maybe years. But that's what our job is to help them ever get to a point where they can step back into life and maybe smile a little bit. Laura Rollo, ABC News 4. And just a few, a few moments ago, we did receive a call that the library has not officially approved renaming the St. Andrews Regional Library. It is pending board approval. Loved ones, they are gathering to pay their respects with vigils and prayer meetings planned all across the low country. In fact, one is going on right now in front of Emanuel AME Church on Calhoun Street downtown, of course, the scene of the crime. ABC News 4's Ava Wilhite is live for us with much more. Hey, Ava. Hi there, Victoria. I just want you to take a look again at the number of people who are gathering across the street from Mother Emmanuel. You can tell just by the large portion of people that you don't have to be a part of this church to be grieving the loss. One by one, flowers placed at the closest location to Emmanuel AME Church. The images from the shooting last night touched the hearts of millions across the nation and here at home in Charleston. I saw it and it was um, shocking and uh, disturbing. Couldn't get back to sleep. Sean Trundy made the quick drive from West Ashley to pay respects with his friend from church. There was something about this attack that made it feel like it was an attack on us and on the friendships that we have. So we had to do something. Anna Devine of Charleston also brought a bouquet of flowers. She says the shooting left her in tears and losing her sense of security. We're afraid ever. And now you're like looking behind your back and I don't like that feeling for anyone. Devine says she prayed the suspect would be caught and will continue to pray for the victim's families. It is a community loss, you know. Um, your hearts break for the families and for everyone and it's a time for us to pull together and realize that we can't do this alone. We all have to pull together and work Work as one. Charleston police had to move the flowers off the roadblocks and place them in front of the church. Lifelong Charlestonian Katie Niss says she arrived to the memorial confused but ready to figure out how to move forward after the shooting. I just hope that everybody can you know, have understanding. Um, and so that we can kind of try to dig into the root of this problem and look at the system and what could have pushed somebody to act this way. Many of the people I talked to in front of the memorial today said that they were relieved that the suspect was caught and will be brought to justice in front of Emanuel AME Church. Ava Wilhite, ABC News 4. All right, thank you, Ava. And clergy members and community leaders, they spoke during an emotional vigil downtown today. It happened at the Morse Brown AME Church. Clergy members say they're the sister church of Emanuel AME. ABC News 4, Stacy Jacobson was at that vigil. She's joining us live from the church. And Stacy, uh, what was the vigil like today? Well, Dean, of course, it's been a very sad and tough day all around the low country, but here at the vigil at this church, you could feel it in there. There was a feeling of hope, this feeling of determination among the hundreds of people there listening, just determined to show that this one person does not define the spirit of the low country. And people from all over the low country joined hands in song. They listened as clergy, as well as Mayor Joe Riley, Governor Nikki Haley, and Congressman Jim Clyburn, as well as others all spoke. Their message was one of peace and hope. You're wasting your time. You might as well join us and help to do good. Help to bring this community together, the state together, in this great nation of ours together. Congressman Clyburn and Mayor Riley both said they had spoken with President Obama about the shootings. They say the president offered his condolences and offered any federal help if it would be necessary. Live in downtown Charleston, Stacey Jacobson, ABC News 4.
All right, thank you, Stacey. Many are gathering at a makeshift memorial site near AME Emanuel, the church where they're leaving flowers and cards. ABC News 4's Gregory Woods joins us right now to talk about the other ways that people can show their support tonight. Greg? Well, during a press conference earlier today, Mayor Joe Riley said an account called the Mother Emanuel Hope Fund was created to help family members as they prepare to put the pieces of their lives back together after this tragedy. Now, the mayor says the account is set up with Wells Fargo. He says the city of Charleston has already donated $5,000. He says the money you donate will help with funeral costs for the six women and three men now dead after a gunman opened fire in the church during a Wednesday night Bible study. Deep sorrow. We have the opportunity to, to help them, and, and when we help them, we also help their hearts because we all know when we're grieving that that hug or that sign of love or support is, is a very important part of renourishing our soul and the whole souls who are injured. Again, if you would like to donate to the church family as they begin the healing process, you can make a donation at any Wells Fargo location or mail a donation to the address you see on the screen. That's Mother Emanuel Hope Fund, P.O. Box 304, Charleston, South Carolina, 29402. Already, Boeing has announced that they've donated $100,000 to the Hope Fund. Reporting live in the control room, I'm Gregory Woods, ABC News 4. All right, thank you, Greg. And the shooting has uh, many reaching out on social media today, expressing their feelings and their concerns. ABC News 4's Sonia Stevens joins us now with that part of the story. Sonia. Well, Victoria, it's been a range of emotion from sadness for the community to praise on how the area has come together. Here's an example of some of what we've been tracking on social media today. On Twitter, Esha says the Charleston shooting is so horrible and sad. People aren't even safe in their own houses of worship. Then on our own ABC News 4 Facebook page, Shara said kudos to Charleston for instead of rioting in the streets, we're praying in the streets. This young man must have carried pure evil in his heart to do this. The people of Charleston are overcoming this evil by praying, placing the tenets of what was being taught in that church that night in practice. And with all the talk on social media, a local professor at MUSC says it's important that you talk to your kids about what has happened. They're seeing it on television, they're seeing it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media they're on. Um, they're hearing parents talk and let them know what's happening, but then also draw a line to that and make sure that you're giving them appropriate information and facts, but not letting them get overloaded by it. And of course, Moreland also said it's important that if you can't go to work, you can't take care of yourself or your family because of the emotions from the shooting, that at that point you should seek professional help. Sonia Stevens, ABC News 4. We've got dangerous heat in the low country and it's going to continue to build as we get closer to the weekend and especially into next week. Another heat advisory tomorrow. We'll take a look at that full forecast and you'll see all the hot temperatures in the seven day coming up right after the break.